For today's drawing, we're going to be talking about doing a two-point perspective interior. So since we are putting ourselves inside the box, what we'll be doing is drawing, instead of the front corner of the box, we're actually going to be drawing the back corner of the box first and then extending the walls of the box out to surround us. So to make sure that we have enough floor space and ceiling space to be able to draw some cool things, we need to make that back wall very small. So on your sheet of paper, make sure it only takes up maybe a sixth of the total height of your page. I'm going to make my back wall slightly off center just so you can see how it affects the angles from the vanishing points. And do your best to keep your vertical line truly straight up and down. I'm looking through at my graph paper underneath there to try to help me. And I'm going to extend the line about an inch below the horizon line. And I think I'll make it a little bit higher, so maybe about an inch and a half going above the horizon line so that it's not perfectly centered. And then as we start this out, I'm going to keep a zoomed out view so that you can see my vanishing points. But as we get into more details, I'll need to zoom in so that you can see what's happening. But um, I think for the initial construction of the house, I'm going to use two different colored pencils just to kind of make it really clear which vanishing point you need to use. So for my right vanishing point, I'm going to use red. We've got some alliteration going on there. They both start with R. And for my left vanishing point, I'm going to use blue. I couldn't find a color that started with L. So anyway, blue will be our left vanishing point. And I'm kind of thinking of our right vanishing point as being everything in the room that maybe is running east and west. And then for the left vanishing point, anything in the room that runs north and south, that needs to lead to the other vanishing point. So you might even label that for yourself so that you can kind of keep track of um, how things are oriented in your imaginary world that you're building here. For the verticals, I'll, I'll try to just use the black for some of those lines. Um, if it takes too long to keep switching back and forth between red and black, I'll just do it for the first uh, few lines until you get the hang of it, and then hopefully you'll remember which, which vanishing point to be using. So to extend our right wall out, we actually need to use our left vanishing point. So line up your straight edge with the bottom edge of that back wall and extend that line out away from that back corner. And then pivot your straight edge. You're still lined up with your left vanishing point. You're going through the top of that wall and you're extending out in the other direction. So we've drawn the right wall. To draw the left wall, we actually have to use our right vanishing point. So line up from that same point at the bottom of the back corner of the room. Carefully make sure you've got that point and our right vanishing point lined up. And then we're extending the line away from the right vanishing point. So this feels kind of backwards to a lot of students. But um, trust me, this is how we have to build it because we're actually starting with the part of the box that's farthest away from us and we're putting ourselves inside the box. So let's add uh, some let's add some doors and I think what I want you to learn how to do is how to create doors that appear to be evenly spaced. So to do that we're going to use the same process that we used when we did our steps and we did a couple of other uh, processes like putting tiles on the roof. We're going to do the same thing but because we're in two-point perspective we no longer can just use our ruler along any sort of plane that's moving towards a vanishing point. If we just marked off one inch increments, these are going to seem way too huge back here and these are going to seem too small. So we have to use the diagonal to make our divisions seem like they're actually getting farther away from us and getting smaller. So the only, the only thing we're allowed to measure on in two-point perspective is our verticals. So write that to yourself only allowed to use ruler on vertical lines. So what we'll do is find a number that's easily divided. If it turns out that you don't have, I'm going to switch to centimeters and see if I have any better luck here. So I've got six and a half divisions there. That's not very easy to divide evenly. So what you can do is you can just slide your ruler anywhere along that wall. As long as you keep it truly vertical, I'm going to slide it way out here and again try to keep it as straight as you can. Here I have 12 divisions so that's going to be a lot easier to measure off evenly and be as accurate as you can. Don't be sloppy marking these 
points. The other thing to remember is you want to not accidentally use your horizon line as one of your divisions. So you have to keep track of which ones are actually your measuring lines and which one is just your horizon line. So if it helps you to lighten the horizon line or make it a dotted line so that you don't accidentally use it as one of your measuring lines, do whatever strategy you have to to uh, keep those two separate. So I'll, I'll make that dotted so that I don't accidentally follow the horizon line as one of my measuring lines. And then, because I built this wall using my left vanishing point, when I divide that wall, I have to use that same vanishing point. So I go back to my left vanishing point, and I'm going to draw in all 12 or 13 of these lines. We're going to have a lot of little divisions. Uh, you don't have to do that many, but I'd like you to have at least eight divisions. It could be an odd number if you want to. It There could be seven or nine. It doesn't really matter. But again, remember, you can slide your ruler anywhere along this receding plane in order to get to a point where you have a nice even number of measurements there. So I'm going to pause for a second while I draw those lines in using my left vanishing point, and I'll, I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, I've drawn in my 12 divisions using my blue pencil, which goes to my left vanishing point. And then in order to start transferring those measurements across the floor or across the ceiling, we need to turn them from horizontal lines into vertical lines. And the best way to do that is using our diagonal method. So choose, you can go from this corner to this corner, or you can go from this corner to this corner, but just do a single line. Once you do an X, sometimes things get uh, a little bit confusing. So I would just do a single line and then we're going to draw a grid going vertically for each one of those spots where the diagonal crosses over each of these measurement lines. So usually what I'll do is once I draw it, I put a dot there and then I extend a truly vertical line through each one of those dots that I've drawn until I have the same number of columns that I have rows on that sidewall. And then we're really flexible. We can extend those measurements now once we have them at the ceiling and the floor we can extend them across the ceiling or the floor so um, it gives us a lot of options so I'll do that step next putting in the diagonal I'm going to draw the dots and I'll go ahead and put the vertical lines in there too so why don't you pause the video as well and catch up to that point so to recap what I did I drew the diagonal line from corner to corner of this right wall and then Everywhere that that diagonal crossed one of my blue measurement lines, I put a dot. And then be straight up from each one of these dots and intersecting it, I drew, I drew a vertical line. So if you did it right, the spacing should seem smaller as we get closer to this back wall. It looks like I'm a tiny bit off on that dot, which makes these look about equal, so I probably should shift that a little bit. And then they should be getting farther and farther apart as they get closer to us. So um, check that out. And then once you've extended the line all the way down to where the floor meets the wall, we're going to be using our right vanishing point and we're going to be drawing lines out onto the floor uh, from that point of from that vanishing point. So that's our next step. If you want to, uh, I'll pause while I do that next step. Okay, so I've drawn all these lines in using my right vanishing point and my red pencil. You notice we have a big gap here so it could be that in order to really fill out this part of the floor we could extend some additional lines this way so that we know where these lines need to be the other option we could do is once we get a few lines coming the other way we could use our X method to extend it the way that we extended the fence posts um, I'm not gonna worry too much about this part most of our drawing is going to be here and then if you wanted to also have some sort of sense of what those planes would look like extended onto the ceiling, you could take a few of these. Maybe we just take every other one now so that we don't have to draw quite as many lines. But let's, let's draw some lines heading across the ceiling too just so that you feel com comfortable doing that as well. We have built this wall using the left vanishing point. So to extend lines in the other direction, we have to switch to our right vanishing point. So I'll stick with my red pencil for this part and those lines should be angling upward as we move away from the vanishing point. Those lines also should be seeming to get closer and closer together as they move away from us. So
So we get a sense now that the floor and the ceiling are moving off toward the right vanishing point. This right wall is moving off toward the left vanishing point. And um, this, this left wall will lead to our right vanishing point. Let's go ahead and put some steps in. We've already got our grid that we need to build a step. So I think what I want to do is make uh, a few steps that lead to a stairway. Um, we really have kind of a short uh, room here. So maybe we just do a couple of steps as if we're in a garage or something and you've just got a couple of steps up to get into the house. So why don't we just do a real simple two-step contour here. So we'll darken in. You've drawn these in perspective so you can just darken them in freehand or if you want to make sure they're perfect you could make sure that you trace them using your left vanishing point. But we'll just do two little simple steps and that way we'll have enough room to keep our doorway in there without extending the ceiling up higher. And then to project the steps out into the room we need to switch to our right vanishing point. So we'll be using the red crayon for this part of it. And um, from each one of the places where the steps change direction, you're going to be adding a vanishing line there. So even though there's only two steps, you should actually have one, two, three, four, five different lines drawn in perspective from your right vanishing point. So every place those steps change orientation, you'll be adding a line. As we get closer and closer to our eye level, of course, we're, we'll see less and less of the surface of the step that you put your feet on. And then what we can do is just decide how wide we want the bottom step, and then we'll work our way up using alternating between vertical lines and vanishing lines until we complete it. So I think at this point, the drawing's small enough. I'm going to zoom in. Hopefully you'll keep track that I'm always using my left and right vanishing points for this. But um, let me pause and zoom in for a minute. Okay, we've zoomed in, zoomed in enough now that we can start to look at the details here. I'm going to decide to make my steps. Um, I don't want to get confused with that back corner of the room, so I'll extend the steps out a little bit farther than that just to make sure that we aren't having to deal with a lot of overlapping lines there. And I'll get rid of some of these lines now that would be hidden in real life. So I've drawn the front corner of the bottommost step and then we can't just guess on where these angles need to be. We need to construct it using perspective. So we'll be using our switching to our blue pencil and extending lines across to the left vanishing point from the bottom corner of this line. And this bottom line has to end where the wall hits the floor. So as soon as your line meets that point, you stop and that becomes the point where it hits the wall. From there we can extend a horizontal line straight up until we hit this topmost line. That's a true vertical line here. And then to construct the in-between lines we will be alternating between a left vanishing line and a vertical line. So from the top of this bottom step we're going to be extending back to the left vanishing point using our blue pencil today. And when we get to this next red line that's coming across, that is our indicator that we need to just change direction and use a different kind of line again. So we switch back to our vertical line until we meet that next red vanishing line. And then from this point, we just continue back to the left vanishing point. So you'll keep alternating between vertical and whichever vanishing line you did not use when you built the first set of lines there. So we have two little simple steps and a little bit of shading here to help separate those plane changes in your uh, drawing a little bit more clearly. And why don't we go ahead and build a doorway now since we have steps there that go to nowhere we'll need to cut a hole in the wall to make a doorway. I'm going to bring my door out a little bit from the corner of the room and um, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Again this is very far away from us so don't make the door too huge. I do want to make sure that um, 
There's a little bit of steps that extend beyond the width of the doorway as well. And um, so now what we need to do is we've drawn the right and left side of the door. We already have the bottom of the door. And whatever vanishing point we use to draw the bottom of the door, that's the same vanishing point that we need to do when we're completing the top of the door. We're so close to the eye level that these lines are all getting really pretty close to horizontal. So sometimes it's easy to get messed up and use the wrong vanishing point. But you always want the top and the bottoms in perspective to be converging together. So you never want to have them be drawn as if they're parallel, uh, like you would if you were doing a mechanical drawing using isometric projection. So since I use the right vanishing point for the bottom of the door, I'm going to use the right vanishing point again to complete the top of the door. And remember, any opening that's on a plane that's moving away from us in space, you need to use the same vanishing point that you used when you built that wall in the first place. So since I used the right vanishing point when I built this wall, when I cut a hole in the wall, I have to use that same vanishing point or things are not going to work out right. So to show a little bit of thickness of the wall here, we've already used our right vanishing point. So in order to cut the opening, we need to revert back to the other vanishing point. So from these two points, I'm going to draw a little arrow here so you know which corners I'm talking about. We're going to draw a line leading to our left vanishing point that will suggest that the wall has some depth to it. And these are pretty shallow angles because we are so close to our horizon line. You're not going to see much of that plane. Then we switch back to a vertical line to show this plane. Now here again we've got some little tiny details so you might have to look at my version of the a photograph of the finished drawing that I'll post with the assignment so that you can see the details here because we're talking about just like a 30 seconds of an inch here but from I'm gonna draw a dot here on these corners that are just sort of hanging out there in space we need to complete that part of the of the doorway so we're, we're we've already used the left vanishing point to show the depth now we go back to our right vanishing point, so I'll use a second line. It's so close to the first one, you may not be able to see it very well in the video, but hopefully in the photograph of the finished drawing, you can see what I'm talking about here. So we should see just a tiny sliver of the wall above our heads, a tiny bit of the threshold that you'd step over to get into the room, and uh, then we see quite a bit of the side wall there. Now, if we wanted to show that there's a floor in this room, what I would do is imagine where, since we boosted up the height of the floor in that second room by adding steps there, we need to move up the point where that floor would be moving into space. So uh, what I'm going to do is just, is just follow across until we hit this corner, um, or you can see where the step the, the top of the step is, and that would be the line that we bring back into this left vanishing point to show the floor in that room. We also could extend some of these lines to show, um, in fact, you could just trace some of your blue. My ceiling's not going to show through my doorway, yours might, but as I get further down, I'll, I'll trace some of these blue lines actually going into that second room so you can have a sense of how small those measurements become as they get farther and farther away from us. So this would be if that same wall were shared into that second room, that's what we would see going into that space. And now we're down at the floor plane. So the actual floor would be where I put that red dot and again, I'm sorry we're getting so small here that it's hard to see those details, but um, I do want to go ahead and show you how to do a pillar. When we drew the bookshelf in One Point Perspective, we located uh, the footprint of it on the floor and then we tracked it across to the wall. Now we've already got a lot of guidelines to help us make, uh, make that happen a lot faster. So what we'll do is let's just choose, um, I do want to put a piece of 
Oh, well, I, want, I want to do a couple doors here. So why don't we why don't we put the post over toward this wall? So what we'll do is um, we've already got all of our right vanishing point lines. So just add a couple lines across one of your measurements here to create a footprint for a kind of small post. In fact, if I put it here, it's going to cover up my step. So I'm going to move it over even a little bit further so that um, it's way off to the side here. I'm going to do this again. So again, don't, it doesn't need to be a perfect symmetrical diamond or anything. We're just going to be treating this as the place where this pillar is going to contact the floor. It's like we're in the garage and this is a beam that's holding up the ceiling. So again, what students often try to do is they try to force the shape into a true rectangle with 90 degree corners and it cannot be because we're in two point perspective now. We're, we're going to be seeing this column from the corner rather than from the face of it. So double check that you've got a diamond shape here and not don't try to force it into a square or a rectangle. Two of, the, two of the lines should be leading to your right vanishing point and the other two need to lead to your left vanishing point. So I'll be checking that really carefully when I'm grading your drawings. From each one of these four points, the corner of this diamond, we're going to be extending lines straight up. And the cool thing is now is we know exactly where we need to end those lines. So what we'll do is we'll track across. I'm going to draw some little arrows to show you which lines I'm following here until we hit the wall. When we hit the wall, we travel up the wall until we get to the ceiling and when we hit the ceiling we'll travel back across. Now for the ceiling I only drew every other line in so I will need to draw in one more line using my right vanishing point so that I, I have the right size uh, division on the ceiling as well but um, we have most of our lines already drawn so I'm going to add in one more line to help us locate the back plane of our pillar once we get it up to the ceiling and so from these four points, I'm just going to extend straight up. We know that the pillar is going to have these two lines as the front and back plane where it touches the ceiling. So those are the two lines that I'm, I'm really watching for as I, as I get up here with my vertical lines. So it's important that you try not to let these verticals get slanted at all. Use your edge of your paper as a reference for whether you've got your line nice and straight or if you have a T-square that's even better. So right now I'm not going to worry about which is the front and which is the back line. I'll just extend all, all of these lines up into that area and then we can erase extra lines as we need to. The front and the back corner of my column are really close to one another. Yours may actually be exactly in the same spot, which is possible if you uh, positioned your back wall in a slightly different spot than mine is, or if this square is a little bit further to the right or left. So don't worry if, if yours doesn't look just like this. The main thing is that you've got a line extending up from each one of the four points, and if these two happen to be directly above each other, then it just appears to be a single line even though we know there's actually two lines stacked on each other there. All right, I see that my um, little picture here is blocking the drawing. Let me shift myself somewhere else. Okay, so we're back to this point where we're trying to resolve what's going on up here and I always find it helpful to retrace so that we know because up here it's really hard to tell which is the front two planes of the box. But if we follow the lines up, and if I had drawn my more distant planes lighter, that would give me a good uh, indicator too of which ones need to be lighter. So I lighten that one up, and I still want to make sure that I'm tracing back the front edge of the pillar to the wall, up to the ceiling, and follow that same line here so that I know that this is the... This is the same plane as that one is. And then from this corner, because we have our vanishing point that it needs to lead to, that line is going to angle down at a pretty steep angle now because we're getting quite a bit above our, vanish our horizon line. And so we'll start to see more extreme angles 
coming in there. Now to complete this, we already have all the information we need to find those points. So I'm going to go from this point and continue it to the left vanishing point to help me finish off this hidden back side of the box. And where it crosses, this back red line is also part of our box. So I'll draw that in a little bit darker as a dotted line as well so that you can see that it's part of the construction of the, the box. And then this one can also be a dotted line, that back corner of the column. And then if you wanted to build, let's say it's a parking garage or something, and you need several columns that are evenly spaced and um, in, drawn in perspective, you could extend that out to another spot. So let's just pick one that's still on our page over here, but we could, you know, extend some guidelines lightly in perspective from both sides of our pillar. And so this would be the footprint of the, the new pillar. So we're looking at these four points as being the footprint and we would extend them up. They might actually, yeah, hopefully they'll still fit on our page. Again, we'll have to add this one line back in because I only drew half as many lines as I needed on that ceiling plane. So I'll go ahead and put the other ones in just to make things consistent here. So I might as well add the other ones that are missing so that it doesn't seem like the ceiling tiles are uneven. we've got them all. So we know that we're following along these two now. To the wall, up to the ceiling, back across, and we'll extend these four points straight up until they hit. And again, we might lose the very tip of this. We'll have to see if it fits on the page. So I'm just indicating it as a dotted line for now. It may not really even show up in the final drawing. And then this would be a visible part of the pillar. So look how huge that pillar gets as it moves this close to us in the picture. And we need to extend up a little bit further. Both of these lines. And we just barely squeeze it on the page. Yours may end up going off the top, so just do your best to include as much as you can uh, track down. So we know that this back corner of the pillar, since we tracked it back to the wall here, came up the wall, and then across here, this will be the point where we need to stop that line. And then from this point and this point, we should be able to follow back to our left vanishing point and draw that in as a solid line. little bit. These colored pencils don't erase uh, very well, so we'll just have to imagine that as being dotted. And this, this, one. this would be the hidden part here, so it would be dotted. And then we switch to the left vanishing point for this one, which I should have drawn as a dotted line too. This would be a solid line here. So this would be a perfect kind of situation if you wanted to try a bookshelf. You could add shelving. The shelving, depending on, I'm, I'm guessing you would put the shelves on this side of it. So if you decide to turn it into a bookshelf, you could add all of the shelves going this way. As it gets above our eye level, remember we're seeing the bottom side of the shelves again instead of the top side of the shelf. So that could be something you could do for a few extra points, but it's, uh, it's certainly not required for this drawing. Well, I feel like we're getting pretty cluttered here, so I'm going to um, zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole drawing then. Um, sorry, looks like it was 
blocked for that last part of the drawing, sorry. So hopefully you can see all the details that you need to. The um, pillar traces back to the side wall, and back up. You can also trace it to the other wall. It doesn't really matter which one you trace it to. The, um, the top, if you notice the top edges of both of these should align, so it's fine to trace it to the side wall if you, if you can fit it on your page. If, if you can't fit it on the page on this side, try tracking it to the other wall and hopefully one or the other will have space to show all of those construction lines for me.